Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Krishna Reddy. I'm a professor of civil and environmental engineering at the University of Illinois, Chicago, USA. Uh, first of all, I want to um, thank Professor uh, Nilo for inviting me to be part of this workshop to uh, commemorate the 50th anniversary of graduate program um, in civil engineering at uh, Fergus. So uh, I'm very happy to be part of this program. Uh, I'm going to present on geoenvironmental engineering challenges and opportunities. Um, before I get in there, I want to um, congratulate the graduate program uh, for uh, uh, wonderful 50 years. Um, and I want to particularly thank Professor Nilo, uh, program coordinator uh, who has, uh, you know, initiated this workshop. Uh, um, and also I want to thank all the, the faculty uh, that I know, uh, Professor Fernando, Professor Carla, Professor Lucas, uh, very talented faculty and, uh, and very friendly faculty. Uh, I also want to congratulate the talented current and former graduate students. I have experience of, uh, you know, advising some students for their PhD thesis. I served on some PhD committees and, you know, you guys are lucky that you are part of this program. I want to thank you all uh, who are watching this, um, you know, for uh, your attention to this program. Um, I visited uh, your, your place uh, several times. Um, it, it is always a wonderful experience, uh, you know, meeting you all. Uh, uh, it's a great, great program and a great group of uh, people in the program. So in my presentation, I want to just uh, explain what is geoenvironmental engineering is uh, and what are the challenges, what are the opportunities, and uh, finally, uh, you know, a few closing comments. And uh, you all know what is traditional geotechnical engineering is, uh, investigating subsurface conditions, designing foundations, designing earthworks, investigating land mass problems, these are all very important uh, topics and the role of geotechnical engineers is very essential for infrastructure development. However, you know, if you look at what is happening over the years, uh, this graph shows, you know, the development, uh, human development index on X axis and ecological footprint on the Y axis. All that development that we are talking about has come out with a lot of ecological and environmental damage. We didn't really care about, you know, depletion of natural resources, increased waste generation, increased pollution, increased greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. And we ignored life cycle sustainability. Now we are realizing that this is not the way to go forward. We should be thinking, you know, uh, differently, particularly we should be paying attention to any kind of environmental issues that we're going to bring in while developing the infrastructure. So uh, this is where you know, um, uh, in you know, a lot of uh, initiatives uh, came up. Came up in 1976 in the U.S. Congress passed a new law called RECRA, Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, that basically you know uh, addressed the issues of disposal of newly generated hazardous and non-hazardous waste and um, required the engineered containment facilities, uh, landfills. Uh, in 1980, U.S. Congress passed the, a comprehensive environmental response compensation and liability act called known as CERCLA or Superfund to clean up contaminated sites. So when these laws were passed, the geotechnical engineers' knowledge of earth materials and groundwater became vital in order to design containment facilities to manage the waste and also to investigate, design, and clean up contaminated sites. So the U.S. EPA developed regulations, technical guidance documents, now they are used worldwide and many geotechnical engineers have contributed to you know, these efforts. And as a result, you know, geoenvironmental engineering evolved. And what is geoenvironmental engineering? Right? So basically the geoenvironmental engineering is the design and application of engineering solutions for challenges related to non-hazardous, hazardous waste management, characterization and mitigation of contaminated sites, enhanced environmental sustainability and resiliency. But all these solutions require multidisciplinary technical approach that includes soil and rock mechanics, hydrology and hydrogeology, geochemistry and biochemistry, biochemistry contaminant transport and transformation, human and ecological health risks. So 
this is what is geo environmental engineering is. Um, and it is, you know, as I mentioned, it's a multidisciplinary technical approach. I wrote an article uh, in 2014 on how the geo environmental engineering has evolved. And uh, this geo environmental engineering is very essential for environmental protection and sustainability. So we should be looking for <clears throat> infrastructure development at the same time, we should be also looking for environmental protection and sustainability. So when we teach uh, in the universities, we should be teaching geotechnical engineering courses. We should be also teaching geo environmental engineering courses so that you know, we are developing the infrastructure at the same time, trying to protect the environment. Now there, there are two uh, you know, uh, terms that are used to express this field. One is environmental geotechnics. Other one is geo-environmental engineering. Environmental geotechnics is a kind of narrow in focus. It's more on you know, applying the traditional geotechnical engineering to geo-environmental problems such as slope stability, settlement, so forth. Geo-environmental engineering is on the other hand, it's a broad field where you apply multidisciplinary background to solve geo-environmental problems. So it's much broader than environmental geotechnology, geotechnics or geotechnology. So I really prefer the use of word geo-environmental engineering rather than environmental geotechnics because we you know, advanced so much uh, in this field. Now in geo-environmental engineering, if you work, you know, there are a lot of interesting challenges and problems to address. Uh, and uh, one of the problems is the, the waste uh, issues. Um, municipal solid waste, you know, all the garbage that we dispose of, you know, every day, uh, that is, you know, still uh, in a lot of countries, they send it to uh, dump sites. In US, of course, we have landfills, but in all the other countries, I think in Brazil, 60% of the waste goes to dump sites. In other countries, in India, you know, other, other places that, uh, you know, the statistics are available, this uh, waste goes, you know, to dump sites and dump sites create a lot of issues. And then a lot of industries, you know, you, we you create hazardous waste, and that is also not properly, you know, handled. And as a result, you know, the, the soil and groundwater is being contaminated. And nuclear waste is considered as a, you know, clean energy because it does not uh, emit any greenhouse gases. But on the other hand, it creates, a, you know, uh, this radioactive waste, um, and that needs to be properly managed. You know, you need to have containment systems. Otherwise, the exposure issues are uh, you know, very severe. Um, mine waste, you know, in Brazil, you know the problems with the mine waste. You know, if you don't handle this properly, uh, you know, there are uh, physical threats as well as, you know, environmental threats associated with one. So you, you may be talking about any type of mine, iron, iron mines or copper mines or like gold mines, you know, all these mines have these kind of mine tailing issues that needs to be dealt with. Coal mines, you know, I visited a coal mine in India, you know, there are a lot of issues on uh, at, at the coal mines in terms of the environmental aspects. And, you know, even the coal, when you burn in, uh, in a power plants, you create this coal ash, and that is generally, you know, disposed of in uh, unlined uh, pits and, uh, you know, contamination, you know, infiltrates into the ground and groundwater is contaminated, or you have some discharges into the surface water, so this is a big, big issue. And in addition to the waste, you know, uh, we have a lot of industrial byproducts that are generated, for example, steel slag, carbide lime, bauxite residue, fly ash, and, you know, uh, granular blast furnace slag, or many other industrial byproducts. And, you know, right now, you know, they are being stockpiled or sent to landfills. So we need, you know, some, how do we address these things? Because these have to be uh, addressed otherwise, you know, we may have uh, several environmental issues. And uh, in addition to the waste and, and byproducts, we have a problem with the polluted land. So in the past, we didn't care about uh, uh, how we handle our waste and, and also there are accidental spills. So because of that, you know, a lot of uh, uh, sites have been contaminated uh, and you have soils and groundwater with this nasty contaminants that needs to be, you know, addressed. Now, recently, <clears throat> you, you everybody you know aware of greenhouse gas emissions and climate change and climate impacts, and these are threatening you know how we um, uh, handle the the waste containment systems or even geotechnical systems. Um, so these needs to be looked into. You know, greenhouse gas emissions are considered almost like a, um, air emissions. You know, air pollutants. So that needs to be addressed also. 
in the broader context, you know, sustainable development is, is essential because we have a population growth and climate change is happening. As a result of these, we have you know, a series of issues, greenhouse gases, pollution, waste, uh, resource depletion, socioeconomic issues, and you know, the sustainability development is in general is a threat. So there is a need for addressing the sustainable development through triple bottom line aspects and not only the geo-environmental issues, but also geotechnical engineer in uh, geotechnical issues. But in general, you know, all engineering issues have to be uh, looked at uh, through the sustainability. So this is another challenge that uh, needs to be addressed. So just to recap the challenges that I mentioned, we have to manage the waste and industrial byproducts that we are generating. How do you clean up and reuse polluted sites? How do we mitigate the greenhouse gases and address climate change impacts? It's called resiliency. How do we achieve enhanced environmental sustainability and resiliency? So these are kind of a challenges that I see that you know, uh, needs to be addressed uh, urgently and, and going forward. Now, when you say challenges, you know, that really you know, kind of gives headache to everyone. But on the other hand, if you are a researcher, you look at these challenges as the opportunities for doing more research. So this is kind of exciting aspect to the, to the researchers. Now, in, when dealing with waste and byproducts, we should be looking at this, you know, the waste management issue at a broader level. So this is the hierarchy that, you know, has been proposed, to, you know, for a long time. So try to prevent and then go down the ladder. But this is really not working because if you focus on certain things at a high level, and, and if you're not able to achieve that one, then, you know, everything falls apart. So recently, instead of you know hierarchy, you know people are suggesting integrated waste management approach. So we should be looking at all those things simultaneously rather than you know hierarchically. So uh, materials and recycling—that's where you know we, as a geotechnical engineer, geoenvironmentalists can play a major role. And also landfills, you know, we geotechnical and geoenvironmental engineers can play a major role in, in related to landfills. So in terms of recycling of materials, there are many industrial products, waste products that I mentioned, and they all have uh, you know, uh, uh, potential to reuse. Um, and, but the problem is you know, the, pro the applications are not looked at you know, uh, completely to be able to characterize and use it in the field. So a lot of times you know, people do characterization in the lab but they don't really you know, do the field scale demonstration and then you know, trying to develop the specifications, identifying what are the constraints in applying the field and also looking at the sustainability overall of using these materials. So we really need you know, more you know, thorough investigations leading up from characterization all the way to into, the, into, the, into the applications. So uh, very few you know, recycled materials have actually been successfully you know, uh, demonstrated to be used in the field, actual field applications. So we have a lot of you know, research opportunities uh, you know, in terms of characterization of uh, recycled and, and, and byproduct materials. And you know, we, we should be not only looking at the geotechnical aspect, mechanical aspects, we should be looking at environmental and durability aspects are very important. And we need to really demonstrate, develop and demonstrate the field applications and develop that you know, performance data so that people are confident about using these materials in actual field applications. And we ultimately, we should be you know, aiming at developing the standards and design guidelines so that you know, more extensive users can be a, a, you know, um, achieved in the, in the field. On the landfill side, you know, this is really bothers me a lot because we still have these dump sites. We know that dump sites pose a lot of problems. I understand in Brazil that more than 60% of the waste right now is you know, going to the dump site. And in India, you know, same situation. We should not be allowing these kind of situations because this is going to lead to more problems into the future. So should not allow no open, no open dumps. And you know, in, in US, we have engineered landfills and impoundments to address these waste issues. You know, we have uh, landfills, we have you know, surface impoundments, and we have you know, uh, good guidance on how you design these landfills. You have you know, bottom liner system, side liner system, leachate collection system, and final cover systems. So this is you know, well established in, in US. We have all the design uh, guidance and 
we we design it and we build it and we are operating operating them so I, i'm just saying that we have resources to you know design these uh, uh, lamp liners so it's it's a well established you know in terms of uh, research and practice uh, and in in us you know we still are doing some research on landfills to improve you know even these landfills that have been pro proven to be uh, performing quite well so we are looking at you know how to uh, degrade the waste a little bit faster leach treatment issues uh, fugitive gas emission issues and achieving the sustainability through mining and other issues so uh, this is what is going on in the us and as i said bioreactor landfills are being researched so that you know we can make this uh, conventional landfills more um, you know efficient in terms of the waste degradation gas collection uh, leachate management and then finally when all the organics gets uh, uh, degraded you know the, the, you're thinking about uh, landfill mining and you know uh, and recovery of resources and same thing you know if you have a hazardous waste we have hazardous waste landfill guidelines we can follow those and then you know there are landfills that have been uh, designed like this but the, my problem is you know in terms of the research opportunities elsewhere you should be thinking whether us practices are applicable in your country or not okay so what i see is people just try to follow what is being done in the us and not able to do those things and as a, as a result you know we are not properly managing the waste and causing all kinds of problems so we should be looking at it you know uh, sustainable and effective containment systems landfills and impoundments we need to be thinking about creating new and innovative indigenous systems so look at what is possible in your country so we can come up with alternative liners leachate collection and removal systems cover systems leachate and gas management systems so you know uh, that fits into the to the local conditions so use of local materials use of local construction and monitoring techniques and life cycle thinking what are we going to use the the site at the end sustainability and resiliency these are the issues that we need to be thinking about it Just don't have to follow what uh, you know is done in the us so you should be looking at locally and what is really possible because let's say you know in the landfill liners you need geomembranes these are the geomembranes available locally or do you need you know 10 to the power of minus 7 clay liner so is is that material available locally if not what can we do to get alternative uh, containment systems that can perform as well or even better than you know the the landfills that we uh, use in us so also we need to develop standards and design guidelines for these things at any cost we should be you know uh, avoiding the dumps they are only you know uh, problematic going into the future and as i mentioned you know in addition to this uh, managing the managing the waste we should be looking at the land pollution and you know we didn't have regulations even in even now you know a lot of countries have regulations but they are not there is no enforcement so as a result you know these wastes have been dumped are being dumped you know everywhere and then you have land and so you know contamination soil and groundwater is being contaminated and that is really a problem you know even dump sites you know everything that you dump there eventually leaches into the soil and surrounding soil and groundwater is going to be impacted by this one so what is the issue because this contaminants that leach out into the soil and groundwater they are very toxic they most of them are carcinogenic so we need to really worry about health impacts on humans and also you know adverse impacts on the uh, surrounding ecology you know so in the past we didn't have any laws and regulations and people were disposing all these things but in the us we have strict laws now you know these things are not allowed and what we are trying to do is you know develop that contaminated site into usable uh, purpose as i as i shown here so for this one if you have a contaminated site there is a logical procedure by which we can clean up the contaminated site so in this one site characterization is very important like you know how we do the geotechnical investigations it's kind of the same way but you know a little bit more additional information on uh, pollution data uh, and risk assessment is one thing that is not familiar with the geotechnical engineer so in geoenvironmental engineering we deal with that one and then we have a lot of different remedial alternatives that we can we can follow so let's say if you have a existing site you don't want contamination to or, you know spread more than where it is so we have vertical barrier system and cover systems that we can uh, put it in and close the sites um and if you if you have a soil or groundwater that is contaminated we have developed you know different soil and groundwater remediation technologies 
And these are being used extensively in the US to clean up the contaminated sites. So these are, even though there are many technologies, but these are the sites that are actually being used in the field. There is a lot of performance data for these things. So uh, the research is more into understanding the fundamentals and developing these, these technologies. So, you know, in, in US, a lot of work is going on on these things and we are making good progress on this one. But elsewhere, you know, there is a lot of need for uh, uh, research. And one of the things so that you should be looking for uh, in the research opportunities is, you know, we need expedited, inexpensive and accurate site characterization methods, okay? We, we can spend a lot of money. Um, so, we, you know, the methods to detect the contamination is one of, one of the things that you should be looking at it. And, you know, again, I ask this question because, you know, in the US we do certain things, but, you know, our conditions are different than the conditions in different countries. So you need to look at local socioeconomic issues versus, you know, uh, environmental risk uh, issues. And then that's when you, you decide the strategies on, you know, how you remediate it and to what extent you need to remediate. And you need to, you know, develop the innovative green remediation technologies. As I mentioned, we have a lot of different technologies that we are developed in the US. You know, can we use those things? Because, you know, some of the things may not be, you know, usable in the country where you are, you know, local materials, local labor, local equipment is different. So we need to be thinking about differently, challenging geological and hydrogeological conditions. So each, you know, location is different in terms of the soils and groundwater. And uh, it's, you know, we need to uh, tailor the technologies to meet the, uh, the local conditions. And there are difficult uh, contaminants, you know, you, you local con contaminants could be different. So we need to tailor uh, the technologies based on the contaminants that exist. And also we should be thinking about, you know, when we clean up the site, what are we going to use it for? So ultimately what we want to do is we want to, you know, address the pollution at the same time, we want to put, uh, put the site into productive use. And we, how do we do this one in a green way, sustainable way, resilient way? So these are the, the lot of interesting research opportunities for, for uh, researchers going forward. As I said, you know, greenhouse gases, climate impacts are becoming more and more. Uh, and there's a lot of research opportunities in this one. So again, when you have greenhouse gases, when you have climate impacts such as flooding, you know, coastal, uh, you know, sea level rise and all those things. So any sites, you know, any waste facilities or landfills or dump sites, they're going to be severely affected. So we are looking at, you know, geo environmental engineering solutions. How do we sequester the carbon? How do we reduce the CO2 from, from atmosphere? So using the, you know, the, the, the phyto technologies that, that can be accomplished. If not, you know, underground storage um, of CO2, you know, there's a lot of geo, geotechnical and geo environmental engineering issues involved in this one. And if we cannot fix the problem right away, we need to be making sure that, you know, existing contaminated sites um, along these effect, in these affected areas are going to be protected. So now, you know, there are efforts to, you know, prepare these sites so that, you know, any effects that happen are not going to be, be impacting the, the uh, you know, uh, the, per the performance, not causing the pollution problems more um, with the with, uh, flooding or sea level uh, rise and other things. So there is a lot of emphasis on resilient design. So if something happens, you know, the flooding or a storm, you know, whatever it happens, so you may be compromising it, uh, the performance of it, but not to the extent that it, it you know, so loses the complete performance, but hopefully it can recover and even, you know, perform better. So this is basically resilient design. So we should be thinking about you know, resilient design in areas where we expect these climate impacts or any other extreme events that we look at it. As I said, you know, in the long run, we should be looking at climate mitigation, basically reducing the greenhouse gases, and we should be looking at social economic issues in a broader way. So this can be accomplished by so-called triple bottom line aspects, environmental, economic, and social aspects. And also, you know, that we not, we don't do, uh, pay, we don't pay attention is the life cycle, um, life cycle you know stages so we need to consider all these things and we should be looking at you know life cycle sustainability assessment framework uh, and looking at a sustainability you know to achieve this environmental friendly economic viable and socially acceptable solutions you know in general you know geotechnical and geo environmental you know i'm showing you an example of geotechnical here because 
if you have these four different types of uh, retaining walls that are possible to use it, which one is more sustainable? So we should be looking at the sustainability assessment and making the final decision on which one to you know, go with. So the same thing in geo-environmental engineering, the remediation technologies, waste containment technologies, all these things can be optimized. Uh, in a broader sense, you know, even when you look at uh, uh, integrated waste management, that should be made sustainable considering these environmental, economic, and social aspects, because you know, every country is different. And as I mentioned, you know, uh, in addition to sustainability, we should be looking at uh, resiliency also. So uh, going forward, we should be looking at both sustainability and resiliency, and we should be optimizing you know, the designs based on these considerations. So a lot of people are now you know, going towards the nature-based solutions because they have potential to be sustainable and resilient. And you know, there are a lot of advantages for, for these things. So you know, less energy, you conserve natural resources, reduce the waste, adaptable, resilient, cost-effective, and these are generally socially you know, acceptable. On the other hand, you know, you need a multidisciplinary background and uh, you, you don't have methods that are standard and you don't have tools that are standard. And we don't have a lot of experience dealing with uh, these kind of solutions. There is uncertainty in the long-term reliability issues. And there are a lot of fundamental issues that needs to be addressed also. But this is the area that, you know, needs a lot of attention going into, into the future. And I wanted to give you some simple example here, you know, what do you mean by nature-based solutions? But for example, if we have a coastal problem, you know, if the uh, uh, sea level rise or surge issues, you know, this is the standard way we, we do it. You know, we just, you know, uh, uh, construct a, you know, uh, seawall, right? That's the standard practice. But now, you know, instead of that, we are looking at these floodable parks or, you know, wetlands. So, you know, the whole approach is kind of different, you know, because this wall, you know, you don't know, you know, how, how, you know, what the surge is going into the future, if this is adequate or not. Also resources that we use, you know, in the conventional systems uh, are not acceptable anymore. So going into the green systems like this one is becoming more and more popular. So we should be always looking at a nature-based solution. So going forward, we should be looking at sustainable and resilient infrastructure both from the geotechnical point of view and also geo-environmental engineering point of view. So in closing, I want to you know, reiterate that you know, population is growing and when economy grows and you know, human activity increases, infrastructure is being developed, we're going to have a lot of you know, adverse environmental effects. And we have seen that one. So uh, going into the future, we should uh, try to avoid these things. So to avoid these, all these environmental issues, we should be looking at a, multidisciplinary approach, you know, uh, in terms of particularly beneficial use of waste materials and, you know, industrial byproducts and waste containment systems like landfills, site remediation technologies, and in general, you know, sustainable and resilient development that we should be looking at. All these things requires a fundamental research that can be done in the universities. But at the end, this fundamental research should lead to practical solutions we are looking at innovative, practical, sustainable, and resilient solutions, you know? So research should be taken into the field and should be demonstrated applications in the field. So, uh, you know, from uh, my point of view, geo-environmental problems vary spatially, you know, problems that we have in the US are, uh, you know, different than problems in Brazil, problems in India are different. So we should be looking at culture, climate, economy, lifestyles, you know, the geology, you know, all these things to solve the local problems sustainably using the local available resources. So these require not the standard solutions. So innovative solutions, you know, locally, you know, adaptable solutions. So um, there are many, many opportunities for, for research, uh, uh, you know, and create uh, new solutions to solve the problems. So that is not happening right now because, you know, we're trying to, you know, copy some solutions uh, from somewhere else and it's not being you know, practical to, to use it. You know, as I said, landfills, you know, we're not having landfills because in other countries, because you know, it's hard to you know, uh, design and build the same way that uh, US does, you know, because you don't have a, a local resources and local labor. And the scope of geo-environmental engineering is great, but you know, it's not being recognized by the geotechnical engineers, geotechnical researchers, because the geotechnical engineering and geo-environmental engineering will go together and there's a lot of scope for this one. And 
you know, I see, you know, a few universities are doing better, but, you know, I, I guess your, you, I saw your university is doing great, you know, Professor Carla and the Professor Nilo are doing a lot of work um, in, in this field. Um, and, but, you know, we need to have more educational research and practice endeavors because, you know, there are low, so many problems that need real research and, and uh, real solutions. So, you know, this is very important. And we should be thinking big, you know, uh, thinking about contributing towards the UN sustainability development goal, goals, contributing to the humanity, contributing to the, uh, to the planet. So we should get out of our silos, you know, think a little bit, you know, broader uh, rather than, uh, you know, narrow way we have been, you know, working on this one. So uh, again, I want to thank our organizers for giving me the opportunity to say a few words. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, feel free to send me email or connect to me on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. You have these my lab websites where you can find more information about our research. Thank you all. And uh, you know, I'm not sure if we, you know how the questions can be handled, but I will be happy to answer any questions that uh, you have. Um, uh, you know, on any any topic that that I covered uh, here. So thank you so much, um, and thanks a lot again uh, to uh, Professor Nilo and uh, all the faculty uh, at uh, New Fergus and also all the students. And, and uh, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity.